Welcome to Stove Top Studios in a hidden underground railroad somewhere in New York City. This is Mr. Caldero, and here I'm with John. What's up, man? Not much. How are you? Doing swell. And here to geek out. So we're going to first talk about the Avengers Age of Ultron trailer. What do you think about that, John? That's right. A new trailer just dropped this week. And just give us a little taste of what's going on. I think the uh, Avengers Age of Ultron trailer is, is definitely a good trailer. Um, I think that it gives a lot of detail into what's going on. Um, it shows the relationship between the Avengers, which is what the most important thing is leading up to it and what Ultron can be. Uh, of course, the comic books, the cartoon, everybody has a different storyline and they're going to have a different take in the movie, but I felt like it was well done and definitely gave a good tease as to how it's going to um, come out. I mean, the movie itself is only six months away. Yeah, and that's that's the first thing that we're getting. Is, for, what, is this in phase three? I'm not too sure about the phase things. I think they're in final cut. So the all. beginning of phase three is after Avengers two, because I I think that Avengers two Age of Ultron ends phase two I believe of the of the Avengers itself. of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, um, it ends phase two and phase three is is after Age of Ultron. So that's what I think. I don't know. Do you got an idea of that? We don't sound like experts right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Just based on the um, what we're gonna go into, which is the uh, which is the Marvel and DC timeline of upcoming movies. If you kind of look at what upcoming Marvel movies are 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 there, they're set in the present universe, not in the future universe. If that's what you mean, and um, they're not they're not set in the future. They're set right around the time of Ultron or leading up into the age of Ultron. So right now. My partner on the podcast is going to announce first the DC lineup because after the trailer of Age of... Isn't it the DC lineup first? I'm going to announce it in chronological order. Oh. So we know what... So it's lineup. both. That's right. I'm going to announce everything. So right. just to wrap it all up, and then he's going to say it in the order in every movie. First DC, then Marvel. I'm saying with the announcements happened first okay. DC announced it first and then it seemed like okay Marvel you think you got something Marvel kind of does the same thing so here you go let's do the announcements and also Sony threw some stuff in there too Sony um, oh, Spider-Man Spider-Man yeah Spider-Man related stuff they just do some stuff here so the closeout of 2014 is a cartoon movie by Disney and everybody knows this is coming up in, in about a week. It's called Big Hero Six. It is a it is a superhero movie. Um, it's not. That looks pretty cool. It does definitely look cool. It does definitely look cool. It's a kids movie, but it still looks like something I will I want to see. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing is too Disney. They don't make movies that lose money. They don't make movies that are not that interesting. Um, most of their movies are fairly successful. Um, 2015, there's going to be three movies dropping. Of course, the aforementioned Age of Ultron Avengers is going to be dropping May 1. So that's going to open the summer. So can I just mention that my favorite part of that whole trailer is Ultron. It seems like the villain is always the one that saves the movie. Yeah, that's The true. ironic thing about it is that the villain is what makes the movies as good as they are. I, I definitely agree. And just the no strings, Pinocchio inspired speaking, he's talking, and it's kind of like we're on Disney and we're kind of wink winking at the crowd, like, no strings on me. And the voice, I forgot his name, but the guy, he was on The Office, and he has a very good voice to be Ultron. Rain, what, so, Rain Wilson? Rain, that's his name, Rain Wilson. He has a very good, steady voice that's like, it stands out to people. Right, right. So, and, and he put a little effects that, on it. It was also in that movie Super, which we'll be talking about later. Oh, okay, I forgot. But um, that's a great choice, and everything else looks good. the The Hulk Buster looks cool, but I feel like I kind of got disappointed at first. But the more I watch the trailer, the more I like it, just because I'm like Ultron, Ultron, Ultron. 
Well, I feel the same way. I What's your favorite part of the trailer if you had to choose one? I actually, again, I actually like the lead in. Um, the fact that they, I feel at first I felt like they sh- they showed too much of the action, like a yeah. lot of other trailers. This, um, you know, in these days. But the more I watch it, the more you figure out there's got to be so there's so many scenes in between the scenes that they showed. Um, it's probably going to be three hours because that's the trend lately. Or make, at least close. Yeah, to that's the trend they make. It. At least two and a half. Yeah, that's it's like Avengers yeah. too. It's that's not just any old Marvel. No, and it's you know going to be in three D like all the other ones these days. So I feel like it's going to be a big bigger movie than what the trailer symbolizes. And if you actually go back and look at the first Avengers trailer, and then you can remember parts of the Avengers one movie, then you actually see that they only showed a glimpse in the trailer itself. So I think once the movie drops, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So what you're Maybe saying is that there's a lot of action since they're only showing this much. That's right. There must be a the heavy amount in the movie right. because Avengers One was kind of like we're assembling, and that was at least half of the movie of them assembling as a team, and then the other half was the action part. But it feels like maybe this is seventy percent action, thirty percent talking. That's right, because all the and it seems right like right. it was fifty fifty the other time. Yeah. So yeah, cool. maybe you're right. That's cool. That's a good point. Um, a couple months after, in 2015, it, July 17, another Marvel movie is dropping called Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man. Now, if you follow the comics and the um, um what's the name of the actor that's playing Ant Man? That he was like in role model and I forgot his name. That he's in um, this is 40. Sean. Sean Michael. Sean Michael Thomas. No. <laughs> that's probably not true but <laughs> we all know who we're talking about here Sean he was on he, yeah he was on knocked up right right yeah i mean i don't know how he's gonna well either way he he seems like a good way because they're kind of using people that have humor to do certain roles and you can't have everyone just be a dry act a dry actor you need to have a couple every, at least every every three or four people you need to add someone with a little just like i'd say tony stark is that also, Star Lord is that, and now we will probably get another guy that's kind of humorous too. Not everybody could be Captain America and Thor that are just like, "I am here to fight." You know. That's true. Um, but Ant Man traditionally is more of a serious character. So um, maybe they're just gonna upgrade him a little with his awesome. personality. He's the one actually that invented um, Ultron. Ultron, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's gonna be interesting that actually that they're gonna release. Ant-Man after Age of Ultron. You know what I was thinking? That maybe Ant-Man created the original thing that helped Tony Stark figure out the bigger picture. You know what I mean? Maybe he still created Ultron in a way. Maybe they're going to say in a past... Because I heard that they're going to have the old... Like um, Tony Stark's father being played again in Ant-Man. Wow. So maybe, you know what I'm saying? That maybe that's going to lead to the origins of Ultron, but in the smaller way. Well, that's and that I'm led saying. to that. Right. And then, because Tony Stark is good at taking something that's already there and making it 10 times bigger. And that's what I was saying, that it's probably not, uh, Ultron is not a jump into the next Marvel Universe. Mm. Um, that's what, because Ant-Man is dropping two months later. Then you kind of see that it might possibly be an origin story for Ultron. Or, you know, who knows? There's also a point which, in the comics, Ant-Man kind of gets sick and tired of all the fighting back and forth. And he totally withdraws. And then eventually he does come back as something different rather than Ant-Man. But Ant-Man's based on a story who is a, a, an engineering whiz doctor. And, um, you know, he becomes a superhero and he joins the Avengers. Moving on, and very... And a couple weeks after Ant-Man is a Fox movie, many of you might have, might know, on August 7th, uh, it's called The Fantastic Four. Oh, really? Fantastic Four? Yeah. Wow. It's a reboot. So we get three movies next year. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a reboot and uh, something to look forward to, um, especially from Fox, which seems that even though they, they're making better movies recently, they don't get the numbers as they usually do. They've been overshadowed a little bit by the uh, marketing geniuses of Marvel. In 2016, we actually are starting to ramp up in the comic book movie world. 
and you'll see the progression as we go. In February 12, and here's an interesting release in February. First movie of the year. First movie, that's right. 2016. And it's another Fox movie, Deadpool. 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 I hear good feedback as far as like, hey, maybe this time it'll be edgier than the first perspective of well i Deadpool. hope so because he, he can't and talk. he's supposed to be a good talker that that looks at the screen and just talks to the fans and it has to be clever it can't be corny so hopefully that turns out good fox has been okay i feel like um but that's why i feel like fox is x-men right yeah it is x-men and yeah. what else they have Fox is X Men. It is also again Fantastic Four movie. Back oh, okay, there. okay. So they within, got at least those two. Within X Men, the bigger one, of course, is Wolverine. That's a standalone character. Um, also in 2016, I know this is the one that what, at Comic Con was one of the most anticipated. March 25th is Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Ooh, Batman versus Superman. Why is it that? Superman had a movie first, but it's Batman v Superman. That's right. That's right. It's interesting, and I think... It's because Batman has so much more success in the box office. Well, this is also Warner Brothers, um, which is a little bit different studio. Batman had that tremendous traction with the Christian Bale trilogy. Um, so, in just introducing a new character, you're right. I think... Best trilogy... My favorite trilogy ever is the Dark Knight series. Is the Dark Knight series? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I think it has its good points. Um, I think it's an excellent film. And again, just the traction. A lot of people do feel that way. It's one of the only... I think it is the only superhero movie that's won Oscars. And um, oh, full okay. Oscars for, for best movie. So I think that... Um, yeah, I, I think that's going to be a good film. Especially... There's going to be a lot of people in it. Like Wonder Woman. I, I, I forgot who else was in it. But they're going to throw different characters in the film. It's kind of going to be like a slow start to Justice League. Yeah, it's definitely going to show foreshadowing to Justice League. Just like how Marvel introduced those two characters at the end of Avengers to kind of um, get you. And the end of uh, Captain America to get you to see what might be coming forward. Um, and they're doing it different. DC is doing it slightly different. They're not just doing every single person gets a movie first. They're doing it in a different way. Right. So again, it's DC, but it's produced by Warner Brothers Theaters. Okay. Um, in May 6, kicking off the summer of 2016, is Captain America Civil War, which will be the third Captain America movie and the final one of the series. Yeah, and the Civil War storyline is that they need to <clears throat> kind of cooperate with the government and... Half of them want to do, do this and other half want to do this. The That's two right. anchors being Captain America and Tony Stark's in two different sides. So I think that Thor is not going to be there because he has other things to attend to. And that's kind of an Earth problem. You know, so that's Civil War, I guess that'll bulk up Captain America's status by having Tony Stark in it. Yeah, definitely. But it is going to be... Nice and I sure. honestly rather have that than another Iron Man. Because now you're just watering down the Iron Man movies. Well, you're not going to have any more Iron Man. I think yeah, that's and I, that's, that's what people are hoping for, but I don't. I hope for him to be in other movies. Because he's done enough Iron Man movies. It's good. He should just be sprinkled in. Well, I kind of disagree. I mean, Iron Man 3 was a decent movie. I feel like, honestly, the first one was the best. That's what I'm saying. I feel and like it progressively got worse. Yeah. Not, in a, not that it's bad, any of them. It's just like the first one was my favorite, then it just went down the line. Yeah, I think they couldn't recapture the magic. That's why I feel like just the sprinkle is better. Instead of forcing, like, let's create a world just because Robert Downey Jr. is good. Let's create another thing we weren't planning to do just... Because he's so successful. I think this Civil War thing is the best way to go. Well, they definitely try to diversify the character by showing his weaknesses in the third one with the anxiety and the, the depression aspect of it. And I think they played on it too much and kind of made it too obvious and uh, instead of more overt that you would, I think, could have been a better way to do it. But just moving into the end of May of 2016, Another Fox movie, and you were asking about this earlier, is X-Men Apocalypse. X-Men Apocalypse. Rumored role for 
Apocalypse is Bane, Tom Hardy. Wow. So I, I don't see how that makes sense, but what do I know? They recast people all the time as superheroes. Hence, Torch and Captain America is the same guy. That's right. So what do I know? That's right. And uh, <laughs> Bane, Tom Hardy did an excellent job in the uh, trilogy, as you uh, aforementioned. Now, in that fall, November 4, Doctor Strange is dropping from Marvel, which is an interesting uh, um, thing because usually these movies are in production for at least three years before they're, they're thought to come out, but they have a date set of November 4 before they've even fully signed a Doctor Strange. Um, actually, uh, I believe Joaquin Phoenix is lined up to do Doctor Strange. Actually, Joaquin Phoenix, I believe didn't want to do it just because of the commitment of what being in a Marvel movie entails. Wow. And he doesn't want to be stuck at going to all the nerd things and you know like you you become a different entity when you become a character. Of course. And then the rest of your life just like this guy can't shake being Han Solo. Right. He's just he's upset about it. And maybe he's one of those actors that just doesn't want to be he wants to be an actor's actor. He doesn't want to be cast in a superhero role and I hear I'm not too happy about it but it's very close to Benedict Cumberbatch oh wow he played he played Khan in the new Star Trek reboot that's right so it's been going back and forth I think he would actually do a better role with Doctor Strange than he did with Khan which I totally sucked for me I think the new Star Trek totally went the wrong way um of course that's Someone who's watched the original Star Trek for over and over and over again. Uh, a week later, after Doctor Strange in 2016, is Sinister Six. Uh, and that's Sony of Columbia. And um, as you know, that's the close. It's still not said whether Spider-Man is in those movies or not. Um, I believe it is. I, I really believe it is. Um, that's supposed to be Spider-Man 3. So, um, so basically the end of the, the series with... Um, with Andrew uh, Garfield. Andrew Garfield, thank you. In 2017, um, you know, March 3, you know, Fox, That's the first of the year? It's the first 2017, of the year. 2017, first of the year. That's right, and Fox can't get enough of this Wolverine, so they're coming out with Wolverine 3. Oh my god, please. <laughs> Another Wolverine. I have a Wolverine shirt on, by the way. But, man, they're really going to milk this Wolverine thing, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, right. I like Wolverine itself. I'll take it. I'll watch it when, um, when I'm home. I don't, I'm not watching that in theaters. It's an easy gimme for, for Fox Studios. They will make money on it. But I, I think that, um, I think that they, the writers need to read the comics. Because it's kind of flown so far away from... He's never wore yellow again, did he? I think in the original he did, right? No, I'm now. saying no. in the movies. That's true. He's yeah. just like, come on, man. When I was a kid, I remember the cartoon, and it's just like, in well, the comics, he was yellow with the yellow suit. I think in the Brian Singer one, back in 2000, they made fun of it because they were all black, and they're like, what did you expect? Yellow costumes. So well, Yeah, they, but it's been long enough since then that at least him, and at least maybe like a darker yellow, I don't know, whatever. That's true. I give up on Wolverine for now until it impresses me again. 2017, um, May 5 drops, and this, I know, this one, Alex, is one of your favorites, Guardian of the Galaxy 2. Woo! Guardians! And it's just Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I thought it would be more luxurious name than that, but I'll take it. Well, we are still a ways away, so they don't have the after line. Okay. So we are, if this is 2017. So they'll come up with something by then, hopefully. That's right. At Guardians of the Galaxy, um, just to remind everybody out there, drops December 9 on DVD, which is interesting because I believe it's still playing in a lot of theaters. That's here. the first time I've seen that. That's something that successful is coming out like a couple weeks from it being off the theaters. It's coming out on Blu-ray 3D. That's impressive. It seems like they just wanted... That's a cash cow for them to be like, let's just keep making most of the money we can make off of this movie. And, of course, the Christmas release, too. You have to and, think about yeah, that. I want Guardians of the Galaxy that's for right. Christmas. And then they... And then to give themselves a boon, they have this huge intro into uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, 
that's going to be dropping four months after, um, aside, or five months after the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy DVD release. These days, the DVD Blu-ray releases are essentially pretty big, um, as, as big as the theater releases. Everybody's got a home theater in their house, so... It's, it it's, pre- it's actually more preferred now because you get to have, you get to eat like a slob and go to the kitchen, press pause, you go. Oh, I do that at the theater. I eat like you're like, hey, stop, just like the cigarette commercial. I, that's right. When I say pause the movie, <laughs> you pause the movie. That's right. Like a Jedi, you pause the screen and you, like a tablet. That's right. And I'll be back, everyone, all 107 of you. That, that's what I do. That's, it's New York. That's all I got to say. Uh, in 2017, June 23, another Warner Brothers uh, Wonder Man, Wonder Woman, Wonder Man, Wonder Woman. Wonder Man, oh man, I want to see Wonder Man. So it's Wonder <laughs> I know, Woman. I know you want to see Wonder Man. Wonder Man. I wonder, wonder. <laughs> A dude dressed up in Wonder Woman's costume. Right. <laughs> I think that would be, I didn't even think of that, but that's hilarious. I think that would be perfect for... Uh, I'm going to get a t-shirt that says Wonder Man, have my friend Giovanni make it for me. That's hype. You don't need, even need the Wonder Man. It's it. like shaped for me. You just need the, the breast logo of the W on the t-shirt <laughs> for a man. I think that would be taken. So uh, a month later in 2017, July 14 is Fantastic Four 2, which is interesting because... They're already planning a second one. Wow. Yeah. Two years after. So, which to me seems like with the first one right now in production, they may have already filmed a lot of the sequences in Fantastic Four since they already have that full timeline. It's only two years dis- difference between them. And uh, also, and I know you were hype about this in 2017 that fall, November 3 is Black Panther. Woo! Chikara. The first truly black superhero in any real movie. Black Lightning. Black Lightning. That's Disney. taken serious. <laughs> and I know you like Blank Man. And you consider him to be the ultimate black superhero. That's right. Blank Man is awesome. And again, and it's interesting because right after Black Panther drops in Marvel, um, and in the comic books, Black Panther is one of the few that actually survives the Age of Ultron. Um, But, you know, again, who knows how the movie's going to portray everything. Yeah, he kind of just came in and I don't see that being... Yeah, I don't really see, unless it's... Uh, a lot of these movies, and I don't even think he's in Age of Ultron. Probably not. And again, a and lot if he of, is, it's like right. a minute. And a lot of these movies are a backstory, and that's why we're going back to the Age of Ultron as being the jump to the next universe. It may be, but with Black Panther there, with the introduction of some of these other characters, it's probably the it's probably prequels and stuff leading up to it. Justice League drops two weeks after. Um, nice Black Panther. It's interesting how these uh, DC and Marvel. I think those things are gonna be moved. Whoever's more scared is gonna move. Piggyback back in front. So Justice League November 17, 2011, uh, 2017, which is only 16 months after Batman v Superman. So again, I wonder if they're only gonna take a six month break or a three month break and go right back into production. Uh, we have two. Mo- we have one movie with an unknown date in 2017, which is a female lead Spider-Man spinoff. Um, they haven't decided exactly what female that they're gonna spin it off on, but that's by Sony Sony Studios. In 2019, we have three movies so far, and that's rather disappointing, especially coming off of 2016, which is six movies, 2017, which is seven movies. So slated for. Um, Again, 20... Where am I? 2018. Oh, I'm sorry. Also in 2017, there's two more movies uh, with unknown dates. Is Venom Carnage, which is a Sony one. So Sony's going to nice. try to drop two movies. Hopefully they do that right, because those are two characters I really like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and again, Lego Batman, which the first Lego Batman was interesting. I watch it with my kids every once in a while. They love the Lego I've movies. never seen Lego Batman. They, they have it. It's interesting. Um, if you're in the... It's not as good as the Lego movie itself. Um, but definitely it is something... Something that's interesting. That is a good... A good movie. In 2018, 
Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six movies dropping. Uh, and again, this is four years later, so who knows when you know things are going to be shifted around, like you said. The first movie of the year... 2018. 2018. Is in March, March 23, and that is The Flash. The Warner. Flash, interesting. Warner. I always liked The Flash, but uh, just DC feels like... This like Batman v Superman has to work for everything else to work. You're you're absolutely right. This and is I, scary for them. And I believe it will. Um, May 4, 2018. Um, and this is three years after Ultron. You have Avengers Infinity, Infinity War 1. Infinity War 1. So the first Avengers Part 3 is going to be in the 18. And what is it? What month is that on? That's going to be in May. So that's that's pretty cool. Infinity Part One. So that means that this battle is gonna be huge. That's right. It has to be turned into two movies. And Infinity War Part Two of Avengers is in 2019, one year later on May three. So obviously they're filming that in one piece and then dividing it. That's right. And that's a lot of people's end contract. Almost everybody's that's end right. end game is there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. That'll be interesting. That. We have so much going on just with the Avengers Marvel Universe. And another Marvel, actually, in 2018 slated in, in July is Captain Marvel. And I know a lot of people are excited for a reiteration of Captain Marvel. Um, July 27, uh, in Warner Brothers, we have, uh, we have the Entourage guy doing Aquaman. and uh, The so, Entourage and, guy. Yeah, that's right. He's doing Aquaman, finally reprising his role after 10 years. Uh, who knew, whoever thought that there would be an Aquaman movie, but it's going to happen in, in 2018. In November 2, uh, Marvel's, and this is an interesting one, and again, um, I know that you were hyped about Ga Guardians of the Galaxy before it even came out. Yeah. And it basically came out of nowhere. Here's another one, a teen comic book in November 2 of 2018. It's called The Inhumans. Oh, Inhumans, yeah, I heard right. about so that. That's another team. Um, and an unknown date is Amazing Spider Man 3 in 2018. That's far, man. That's very far. So I think oh, they're. Brutal. They're, they're definitely hoping that Sinister Six in 2016 and the female lead and Venom Carnage in 17. And then it kind of makes sense to be 18 Amazing Spider-Man 3. But by that time, um, Garfield's going to be old. He's going to be like <laughs> Harry Potter trying to He's going to be like Daniel Radcliffe. the end of his Spider-Man career by Pretty part much. 3. In 2019, April 5th, The Rock is going to be reprising the role in a wheelchair as Shazam. So we'll see how that happens. <laughs> reprising his role? <laughs> Well, making, I'm sorry, making up, debuting I was like, role. this happened before? Debuting as well. Uh, and again, Avengers Infinity War 2 in 2019 in May is going to be dropping. And another um, big one that year. So 2019 is going to be a big year for, for these teams. In June 14, on June 14, Justice League 2 is going to come out. So Justice League 2, um, of course, the first one aforementioned Lee, came out in 2017 and two years later they have a, a date and they may speed that up they may do just like one two the same and try to release just and like marvel has the heads up for me they do so far uh, just because i guess they have a better base of movies well i think they have the budget they have a larger budget at this point working off of the um because they know the success of the avengers itself so they have they have a little bit bigger success right and now. And their their boss is the mouse. That's true. That's true. Endless funds from the mouse. That's true. And in twenty twenty we have Cyborg coming out in April. So and that's why Do you wanna see a cyborg movie? I don't know. I don't wanna see an Aquaman movie personally, but I'll go see it. I I think that if if I see the commercial and it looks really cool, I'm in. Maybe. But Maybe. Cyborg feels like it'll be like, I'm the Terminator type of thing. And I know Shaq wants to play Cyborg. Oh, because... please. No, he, he moves like a slug. There's no way Cyborg is going to be well, played by well, a big... Well, maybe with mechanical parts, Cyborg, he can no, go back into the NBA and play. So. Why don't he play that genie that he That's played? Right. Forgot Shazam, or what is it? Kazam? Kazam, right? 
So why don't he just do part two to that and just call it a day? There are six untitled movies um, that have yet to be released for a date. And what is all DC? Um, some of them are DC. Three, four of them are DC, and two of them are from Fox. Um, one is X Force, which is interesting. Um, which is another group movie, um, and another one after that is Gambit. So I think Gambit's going to be an interesting, interesting one too. I feel like they they should do a Gambit movie to do it justice. I think isn't um your your favorite favorite actor going to be Gambit um from Twenty Two Jump Street? Uh, what's his name? Um, Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. Yeah, he's not my favorite actor. Your favorite, but... <laughs> your favorite. My man, my man crush. Yeah, um, you can't wait for that new movie. That he's he's a wrestler and then hit like um what's his name. Brokeback Mountain 2? Yeah, Brokeback Mountain 2, that's it. Let's continue. Everyone knows it. <laughs> so, Warner Brothers uh, does have four <laughs> movies that are unknown. Um, one is Sandman, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is he getting a whole movie? Yeah. All right. Sandman. So, it's just going to be a picture of the beach. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Justice League Dark. Um, which I, I personally love Justice League. I know you have no love for DC. I, no, I do. I just... I have love for DC when it comes to everything except the overall picture of the universe. I see. Like, I like them in pieces. Like, I'm watching Gotham. I like DC. I, I used to watch Justice League as a kid. But Marvel's winning the movie-going experience. I see, I see. And they do, in the comics, again, the prequel to all these movies is they release that DC 52 universe. So I'm scared movie. that they're not going to do it justice. No pun intended. Ah. Uh, I see that. Um, <laughs> and the last two are untitled Superman Batman movies, which definitely are going to get released. But I think, like you said, all of that for for DC and Warner Brothers hinges on the Batman Superman movie. Um, you know, hopefully for Ben Affleck, it won't be another Daredevil because <laughs> if it comes out to be Daredevil... Oh, that's another person that's playing another superhero and hopefully it works this time. If it comes out to be another uh, Daredevil, then... It's probably You said Ben is pretty bulky, right? You've seen him in a picture. That's right. He came out and he's Jack, but just because someone's Jack doesn't mean... But he's doing all right. His acting is pretty good recently, so... His acting has become better. Absolutely. Yeah, so... And it's not like Batman is such an in-depth role that you're scared he's not gonna... Everyone could... Everyone knows Batman. He's not like a character you have to dig deep in and, you know... He's a known character that you you have plenty of material to look through to get information to be that guy. That's true. That's true. But That's point. I don't know. I hope for the best. It's scary. Batman v Superman is scary because that's the big. So that's everything, huh? That is everything in the upcoming launches, and they they were hyping each other up. I know that um, Marvel. Dropped. It sounds more exciting as as more for Marvel right now, but hopefully DC will get me excited for the the future well ultimately it's exciting for the fans yeah you know it's exciting for me especially this is the first i was thinking about this the other day this is the first time anything has been this long in movies like an arc of stories this long in history this is kind of like they're making history they're Absolutely. the first and second to do this well i mean also think how many movies have come along in history that have made um a billion dollars in one one sitting you know um, also, outside of this, you know, in the nerd realm, is the Star Wars series that isn't on this map. Um, and I know that's Star its own thing. Yeah, that's and the Star Trek series that isn't on this map. Star Trek is is not winning against Star Wars. No way. But I'm also and waiting. I'm hopefully waiting for uh, Jar Jaws eight and uh, E.T. Part 2. I'm definitely waiting. I've been waiting 40 years now for that. So. <laughs> E.T. Part 2. <laughs> so, John, why don't we jump into the homework that we assigned each other. I saw the horror movies and in the theme of Halloween, we're going to continue another topic, superhero slash a costume movie. So, my assignment for you was... The Super. Super. And, it's and what did you think about Super? And the Super is a movie that was uh, made recently. Uh, not recently. Dwight from The Office. I don't know his Dwight real name, Reed but... Wilson in 2011. Um, there's also another movie called The Super, uh, where Joe Pesci played the superintendent of a building. And that's, that's The Super. This movie's <laughs> called Super. 
Is so don't get it confused. Don't don't take our suggestion and go type the super. That's true. That's so true. don't get confused out there, people. So I thought it was a good movie. Um, it definitely started very unassuming, and I think that's the the genius of the movie: the fact that it was so un, unassuming and it escalated um, in a good way. It escalated to the point at which you didn't know where the story was going until um, until he bashes a guy with a pipe wrench. And then it's just like yeah, wow, I gotta see that this, movie again. This is it's a real, good. this is a real, real movie, and uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and, and it, it has it, a lot of shock factors in it. It does, it does, because it keeps you at a certain pace, and then you get surprised, right? Because you look at him as a comedian just because of The Office, so sometimes things throw you off because you're like, "Whoa, that happened." He's I'm used to him getting pranked on by Jim, I'm not used to this serious stuff going on. Well, I, I think he did well in the role of breaking out of that shell and just being himself and being the character. And playing That's the what character. made his performance stand out so much that you're surprised that he could get out of that. That's right. It was a really good movie. And again, you, you, mentioned, to, you mentioned a movie earlier, Blank Man, which um, I really like that movie. Again, made back in the 90s. It was cheesy, but it was something <laughs> It in the was 90s. meant to be funny, so... Yes, exactly. And then, you know, um, and I think you said earlier when we were talking that this movie is, is kind of reminiscent of, of Kick-Ass and that series of movies. But what's interesting about those movies, Blank Man and Kick-Ass, is that, okay, they, you can definitely tell that they have their origins in the Batman series in the 60s, where it's very campy, and they have their, their idea that it's being lifted off a comic book page. Which is going back to the superhero movies that we saw before. None of them are made to feel like they're really lifted off the comic book page, but instead the audience themselves are, are immersed in the comic book. So you don't really feel like you're... It doesn't... Yeah, exactly. It feels like it's a real life thing. Exactly. And you're putting an element that's not usually there. Right. But when you watch movies like Blank Man and Kick-Ass and The Super, you kind of feel like you're reading the story and you're looking at it from... An outside perspective and then they're bringing the comic to you and then when things happen it feels realer <clears> than <throat> like a regular Marvel movie it feels like it's more to home for regular people well the reason why it feels that way is because you're you're looking from the outside perspective and you understand your character from the outside if you're if the movie is trying to immerse you you're gonna have reservations about whether it's you can feel that or not but as someone who reads it, so it's making it so it's that you're looking outside in, it, it, there's shock value is a little bit different because it's not as immersive. And there's value to both of them. And one of the things I felt like were really done is that the campiness and the cartoon effects of the punches and the slashes in the Super were not till the very end. Whereas in Kick-Ass and Blank Man, they were, they were introduced almost immediately. Um, as soon as you see the character, which is cool, and then, you know, the little dancing scene. Yeah, with super the girl. builds to something. Exactly. And so you don't see that to the final climax. So you're just like, wow, he finally develops into it. So the development of the character of the super as, or the Crimson Bolt. The Crimson Bolt. The Crimson Bolt, which I wanted to be as, but I only saw the movie recently. So I couldn't sit down like him and make the costume in his. Uh, yeah, that, that'll be maybe next year, man. Maybe next year, definitely. But I, I definitely feel like um, I definitely feel like it, it was a good movie. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Being a superhero fan. So, the assigned movies that I got from you was I'm gonna start with uh, all these are all horror. I'm gonna start with I believe it's called Deliver Us from Evil. Yes. That was decent. It wasn't great. It's a good one time watch, people. It has good moments towards the end, like the very freaky praying to like uh, exorcism thing and the guy's chest all cut up like that. That If you like gory, weird stuff, you'll like this movie. But skipping along, I'm going to talk about the best movie I've seen in a while, especially horror movies, The Conjuring. I'm ve I'm, if anyone that personally knows me knows that. I'm not too big on horror movies because they don't scare me anymore. Hmm. I'm jaded when it comes to horror movies because it's all the same, all the same thing all the time. But this movie, I, I watched it with bass and I was scared. 
It wasn't like I was <laughs> like a girl, but it was like I was trying to be scared. You know why? Because I want to be scared. I was like looking at the screen. I stood up and I tried not to get distracted by anything. Like I actually got invested in trying to get scared. And I did get scared. Not like, oh, jumping, but like a creepy feeling that when something's about to happen. I see. I can't watch movies like that. And it's, yeah. And Six it's, months later, I'll still be peering, <clears throat> peering behind stuff. When it's dark, I'll have to like sing sing songs to myself. Yeah, I swear I see Annabelle in the hallway sometimes. Oh, let's see, like, I can't. I can't so, do that. and I'm not gonna spoil it, but I'm gonna say my favorite part that scared me in the whole movie was when the kid looked under the bed and he knew there was something there and and it wasn't there and it's like every kid knows that feeling thinking there's something under the bed and that captured it perfectly. And um, I think that's all my my reviews for that. I've seen a couple of other movies, but none really worth worth mentioning. I saw Neighbors. Neighbors was kind of funny. You mean Good Neighbors? Oh, no. <laughs> bad Neighbors. Bad as, neighbors as you, as you coined the term. Bad Neighbors. Hey, you got the movie Bad Neighbors? I was like, no, I never heard of it. Um, bad, bad Neighbors was a good movie. I actually saw that too. It was funny. Um, you know, I think is that the sequel to, to Neighbors? <clears throat> That's right, it is. Oh man, I haven't <laughs> seen Bad Neighbors. Neighbors was a good movie. I, I think Seth Rogen played a good role, which uh, he is a funny guy and he is a good comedian, sort of, but I don't think he's as good of a main character as a lot of people hold him out to be, as, you know, uh, going back to the superhero thing, Green Hornet. Right? It was kind of a lame movie because he couldn't carry it. <laughs> yeah. So it was, Too soon, my friend. That's right. So, Green Hornet and Daredevil. Maybe, who knows? In 10 years, he'll be the next Batman. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's The next reboot, maybe. That's right. But, uh, any, anything else you've seen interesting? Because I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm fresh out of ideas. I think those are the, all the movies I've seen. I've seen the 1974 Great Gatsby movie. <laughs> it was a bore. And I wish I would have seen the newer version first because it kind of ruined it for me. Oh, wow. So all of you people that say, watch the older one, it's... No, you're completely wrong. It ruined the newer version, which was way better, way better acting. The killing in it was way more realistic than the... Oh, 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 from the 1970 one. That's, oh, 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 when nobody dies like a spaghetti monster. And like, like it's so dramatic. Like, oh, I missed you so much. Well, you don't, you don't like So, dramatic. if you, you haven't like seen The Great Gatsby, watch the Leonardo DiCaprio one. I'm sorry. Stay in the past and see the horrible, horrible acting if you want. It's dated. But I suggest you watch the newest version of it. And that, one, that one itself. And people dated. ask why there's reboots. And I'll give you that example. Well, There's that no one, better example than that. Well, that one was uh, a movie that didn't have great reviews in the first place. And we just based on the book. So, but this recent one, uh, Great Gatsby, was an okay version. Um, and definitely, I think you liked it better because it's familiar characters that you know, familiar act actors and such that you know and are reprising the role, which is those people are like, they're, who are these people? And originally, the Great Gatsby people are younger people. And in the book by Scott, Scott Fitzgerald, and in that 1974, they picked older people. I thought, but then looking back, they were actually young. So you know how, like back in time, you look at people like a yearbook and be yeah. like, "Wow, you know what? Like everyone this. smoked a pound of cigarettes a day." Look so at these old people in high school. And yeah, it seems like that, but actually, they're they weren't young. They were, I mean, old. They were actually like everyone lives years. longer now and looks younger from and, twenty years ago. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> no, but I'm saying that, and also the quality of the thing makes things different makes you not really see how they really look and we have so much quality now that we can see a pimple hair on somebody's forehead well hd definitely put, yeah so it into a new a there's new no world. like movies that i've seen or as far as this news but star wars news i believe there's another two weeks of filming and they're wrapped up that's right star wars is close to being over and I got to get my Jedi costume together. I don't know. I'm panicking. I need to get Darth Maul painted on my face. I don't know yet. I don't know what the plan is. And I believe Dumb and Dumber 2 is coming out. And that's going to be 
the next movie I'm going to see in theaters, I believe. And that and Interstellar. Interstellar looks interesting. Those two movies I have to see. I know I'm going to be disappointed with Jim Carrey. <laughs> it's just destiny to be disappointed because it's never going to live up to the original. But you just got to go. It's just one of those things you got to go. And Interstellar. Anything you're looking forward to seeing that's new? Well, in DVD release, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I didn't see oh, that you haven't movie. seen that? I didn't see it. That was a good one. So, I feel I, like that's a good one. I um, think that was good, yeah. I personally haven't seen Guardians. Guardians um, of the Galaxy, that's a really good one. I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't have a lot of chance to go to the theater, so everything I watch is on Netflix or Blu-ray, and, um... That's um, a definite buy. So I'm definitely... That's, like, you know, if you're thinking about renting it, I'd say buy it. Especially if you have a 3D TV. It's a, and for you that you have kids, that movie's not, like, sexually driven. I think it'd be okay to be like, yeah, I'll sit here with my son and watch it. It's not too bad. That's cool. But my son's too too young where... He, he won't gets, concentrate. He won't. He does not. He'll get up and do jumping jacks and... Yeah. And so I, I didn't want to watch Chinese copies with, with bad subtitles in the bottom and people walking back and forth. I'm definitely buying it. So I'll so, look out for, for Guardians. I know that's like your favorite movie. That's my year. favorite movie since Dark Knight Rises. Okay. So I think that's... That's all, folks. Here at the hidden underground bat cave of stovetop studios in new york city we will see you earlier next month i'm gonna try to give it to you in the middle of the month instead of the beginning of next month like we did this time but we just wanted to watch the horror movies and you know go with the theme and be scared it's halloween by the way we're recording this on halloween so it counts for the month of october that's right so we we won by technicality so see you in the middle of November and we have to we if you guys have any suggestions what we should watch, what type of movies, but hey, maybe since we have nothing to think about, maybe documentaries, I don't know. We gotta We're discuss it. About holiday movies, right? Holiday as, movies as we can say for December. As Thanksgiving and Christmas rolls around, but yeah. we can actually split it in two parts if we want, because there's a lot of Thanksgiving and holiday movies. Yeah, that's true. But uh, but as it is Halloween, I, I gotta go and uh, start my Jar Jar costume up because I gotta, <laughs> I gotta paint, you paint it up. You know? Your Jar Jar? So my Jar Jar, half Jar Jar, half 3CPO. So uh, I gotta go set it up on you. So peace out, people. And this is Watch the Podcast on YouTube. I'm trying to set up my my show on a different different avenues trying to get it as just a straight audio link that's not on youtube on podbean.com i'm figuring that out today hopefully i got it up by the end of the weekend and i'll see you next month and subscribe like and be a douche on the comments if you like that's right all hate. comments are love hate, hate is love me. i hate you. hate is love love is hate I so hate however you, way so. so signing off See you next month. You suck. You fans. Awesome. I wonder if I touch the sky. Would you care for me? What now? I'm on the ground. Barefooted, feel me in my shoes. Rare footage for the world. I'ma bleed till I'm all covered. Reaching, hands all leaky. Lord, I just wanna live through the speakers. Nieces, fresh off the bleachers. Jesus, reaching to God, I might reach him. Bill him, highway to heaven. Kill him, get to the top, I don't fill him. Thing, not a goddamn thing. Sin, I'm knocking the gates, I want in. I'm reaching, but I only made it to cloud nine I'm dreaming, but it's only up a better high Coge mis manos, mi creepy head lado Con mi gente fumamos, páselo pa' lado I'm reaching, but I only made it to cloud nine I'm dreaming, but it's only up a better high Coge mis manos, mi creepy head lado Con mi gente fumamos, páselo pa' lado Ey, páselo pa' lado Mes caldero, vamos a subirte otro grado Puerto Rico blood, still broken Show me love, Coney Island, born and raised Nothing can keep me awake
Looking up to the sky, just waiting to know why Corruption all on my ground, yet they want the easy way out That shit just makes me sick I'm reaching, hoping for some better days Hold my head up straight I'm reaching